So one of the absolutely key issues that you need to get right in an introduction to a research paper is stating the research gap. Because if you don't state it properly, even if you found it, but if you don't state it properly, it's very likely that your paper will be rejected. And the reason for that is that reviewers are really looking for, you know, the novelty of your topic. And the research gap allows you to highlight the novelty of that topic. That's why in this video, I'm going to show you four different ways uh, with examples from four different fields of how you can present the research gap in your research paper. So let's dive right in. So to illustrate how important clarifying the research gap is for your paper, um, let me give you a personal example. Recently I submitted a paper to one of the top journals in my field, teaching English. And the paper was not rejected, but it came back with major corrections. And one of the key issues that both reviewers pointed out was that they could not really see the novelty of your topic. And I puzzled over this for, you know, for a couple of weeks, really, you know, I looked at the comments and, you know, I wasn't really sure why. And then it struck me that the way I presented the research gap just wasn't appropriate. So in my mind, it was completely clear why my research is novel. And I'm sure it's completely clear to you because you're passionate about your topic and whatever you do on your topic, you feel like it's novel. But we need to present it properly in the introduction to the research paper as well. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you four ways in which you can do this and present the research gap. Before we do that, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly write research papers for high impact journals in their field. So what are the four ways of presenting the research gap and how you can utilize it? Well, the first one is really lack, or lack of or insufficient research. And this can be on a particular aspect of the topic. This can also be to do with, um, you know, with um, geographical area that there haven't been enough studies in a particular location, uh, on a particular group of people, on a particular material or so on. But the basic premise is that there are just is it, aren't insufficient studies or there is a lack of studies on that particular topic. So with that said, let me show you an example um, of this and how it is actually presented in research papers. So let's look at um, this paper from the field of um, food, food functionality, and let's see how the researcher presented the research gap um, in here. So we can clearly see the research gap just right at the very beginning here, right? And specifically, this is um, a gap in a, in a topic that a specific aspect of the topic has not been um, studied yet. So processing intensity, right, has not really been studied, right? And then importantly, the researcher also explains what has been done instead so far, right? And then they explain why this other aspect, processing intensity, should be studied, right? But in here, you can basically see how, um, you know, a lack of research on a specific topic or aspect of the topic um, can be a research gap in how to present it, right? So you can use phrases like has not yet been included, for example. Now, the second thing that you can do to highlight the research gap is to talk about um, a controversy or a lack of understanding in your field. What do I mean by that? Well, um, in many fields, a lot of research has already been done. However, despite this research, we still don't know, for example, whether, you know, whether something actually works, you know, or the different studies have brought contradicting findings or the findings are not significant and therefore we we kind of still don't know what's going on so that's what i call the lack of clarity or a lack of understanding in your field or a controversy 
in your field. And that's the second type of research gap. So let's see with an example from a different field of how you can actually present it in your paper. So you can also look at the research gap in terms of, you know, lack of clarity or lack of understanding in your field. So let's look at a different example from a different field. This um, paper is about weight loss, right? And let's see what the researcher did here and how they presented um, the research gap, right? So let me highlight that for you, but it's very easy to spot, right? So we've got little is known about, right? And then we also have it is not clear whether, right? And in here it was generally not possible to, right? So what we've got here is that, you know, previous researchers have done a lot of valuable work. Um, however, things are still not clear. There is a lack of understanding, right? And your study um, is going to clarify this lack of understanding, right? So that's another type of research gap that is commonly um, used. And you can use phrases like little is known, um, it is not clear, um, to present this type of research gap in your paper. Now, the third way in which you can present the research gap um, in your paper is to point out the limitations of previous studies. So each study, no matter in which journal it was published, how good it was, will always have some limitations. You know, to give you one example, um, in some fields, um, people tend to use a very small sample size, right? So even though they, they might come to some conclusions, you know, the, the sample size just limits um, you know, the, how generalizable the findings of that study can be, right? And therefore, we can point out these limitations in order to justify our study, right? So again, let's look at a practical example. Let's see how this is actually done in a research paper. So we can also talk about, you know, limitations of previous studies and use those as the research gap, right? So, you know, in here, if we look at... Um, this whole paragraph. Um, first of all, you know, the, the writer clearly states that there have only been four studies. So first of all, there is a clear lack of studies on this particular topic. But more importantly, you know, this wouldn't be enough to justify this study. More importantly, um, you know, the writer points out some limitations of those previous studies, you know, that they were conducted in just a specific context in the US or the UK, right? And another problem is that they are over a decade old, right? And, you know, another problem, there's another study in here in a different context, but it used a very small sample size, right? So that's a limitation of that previous research, right? Um, and also to further back it up, in here we even have a quotation from a previous study, right? Um, that shows that the limitations of previous studies and the problems with previous studies. You know, and this is used in order to justify the current study, right? So you can you, you can talk about the limitations in order to give justification for your study because your study aims to solve these problems of previous studies. Now, the fourth type of a research gap that you could also use to justify your study is sort of a real world problem that needs solving. Right. So this is really good if you've got, you know, if you're writing on something that has practical implications and um, it's it's a problem that people out there in the real world are actually struggling with. Right. And, you know, you can point out that, uh, you know, for example, um, the way things are done at the moment, maybe the way a certain mechanism works. Right it has, has problems and it's just not working as it's supposed to be working. And you're going to propose a solution to that particular problem, right? Um, so this is very nice for more practically oriented research topics. And let's see how this is done on an example from um, the field of physics. Now, finally, um, this paper is from um, physics, right? And in here, we're going to have a real world problem that needs solving. And this is used as um, a research um, gap, right? Um, how can you do that? Well, let me maybe make it slightly bigger for you, 
right? So, you know, they, they talk about like production methods of different beams and things like that, right? Stuff that physicists study, right? So, you know, this first method that is currently used is unpractical, right? And then we've got a justification why it's unpractical, right? Right, and then again, it's iterated that it remains unpractical with respect to, right? Um, and then we've got another technique, right? But the beams produced with such techniques suffer from low production. So we've got another kind of problem, right? Um, so you can see that, you know, basically in here, we, we've got a real world problem because physicists need to produce these beams, right? But the way they are currently produced is just not practical or it has problems. So it's, it's a real world problem that needs solving. And this paper is going to propose a solution to solve this problem. Stronger. So you don't have to limit yourself to just one type of a research gap, right? And as we saw in one of the examples that I, that I showed you on the screen, right, you, you can mix them up and say, you know, that there is a lack of studies on a particular topic. And in addition to that, some of those previous studies have certain limitations, or maybe it is still not clear, um, you know, what, what we should actually do, right? So definitely, um, you can you can mix them up. But regardless of how you mix them up, it is crucial that you present the research gap clearly before you state the research aim in your paper. And if you do this properly, this will really increase your chances of getting your paper published in top journals in your field. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button so you don't miss any in future videos that I release on a weekly basis. And if you want to work with me more personally to help you to regularly publish papers in top journals in your field, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation calls with me or a member of my team, where we're going to dive deeper into the challenges that you're facing with your research papers, and we'll see how and if we can help you. And then, you know, if it does turn out that we can help you solve your problems and achieve your goals faster, then we can talk further about how exactly we would work together and what our services would entail.